Give you all the praise, Lord.
salute you today and thank God for you and your service here in this vineyard. Um, um, amen. I heard a young man say not too long ago when he came over to our church, he, he said, and to the fragrance of the house. And I said, wow. Uh, but to the fragrance of this house, our dear mother. Amen. amen. We thank God for Lady Aurelia. Amen. 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 We thank God for her. Thank God for her. Amen. amen. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge some folk who came out um, today. Amen. I'm going to ask you, United, wherever you are, to stand. United Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Thank God for those who came over. Amen. 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 Our chairman of the board, we can pass on. Thank God for him. Amen. You've already met our uh, minister of music musically. Amen. But I thank God for Dr. Praise, Brother Dion Davis. He's always faithful to his host. Amen. I'm almost uh, through, but I uh, do want to let you know that uh, um, I'm grateful and thankful uh, for the prettiest flower that God allowed me to pluck out of his garden. In almost 25 years, I've been showering that flower with my love every day. And I want her to stand so y'all can see how pretty she is. Amen. Uh, Lady Sabrina Dix. Amen. Thank God for her. Amen. Amen. And um, my beautiful daughter, I thank God for Imani is here with us. Amen. And y'all know Trevor would have been here, but Trevor is in Cincinnati completing his first year of studies. And we thank God for him. Amen. 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 We'll be remiss. Amen. Um, listen, I am probably one of few pastors that had two 24-hour posts. Amen. I'm a pastor 24-7. Amen. But I also serve as a bailiff because the judge is definitely judge 24-7. Amen. We thank God for Judge Turner. Amen. Amen. Judge Temp Deborah Turner. I don't know Judge Deborah Turner. Amen. And Reverend Down Turner. Amen. Surprise me up in here today. Amen. And their son. We thank God for Don Don being here as well. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. 15 years of service. Amen. And I thought about it. I said, you know, this pandemic has done something. Um, it has shown us um, how to do things. Listen, God's word never changed. Um, amen. But the pandemic forced us to acknowledge that ministry and methodologies um, do change. Amen. And so um, while his word doesn't change, certainly the way we do it has. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There will be a time when a pastor will be called and I, I you know, the pastor will take the invitation, but it's rare that the church would come on a Sunday morning. That's pandemic. Amen. Uh, but we give God praise. Here's a word from the Lord found in Proverbs chapter 27. And just one verse. Verse number 17. Amen. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 17 reads in this manner. Iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpened the countenance of his friends. Amen. Amen. Iron sharpened iron. So a man sharpened the countenance of his friends. And for a few moments, I just want to ask a question. Do you make me better? Do you make me better? Wow. Iron sharpens iron. Mm. So a man sharpened the countenance of his friends. Yes, sir. Facebook. I was one I wouldn't get on social media, didn't want to have nothing to do with social media, didn't. But that's because I really didn't understand it, but I thank God because, um, you know, Facebook and Instagram and all those platforms are good um, if you use them in the right way. Uh, amen. But one thing that Facebook does, it, it has a friends list. And every now and then, it uh, asks you to tell you that this is somebody you should know. Amen. And I know that um, my wife and I, every year, at the beginning of the year, we...
go through our friends list and um, folk that, that you haven't interacted with. Um, you know, you may want to clean it out because you're only allowed to have so many friends. And so I thought about that and I, I come to the realization that um, in order for us to grow in the grace of God, in order for us to be all that God would have us to be, how many of you know that God has to break up some relationships that we've grown accustomed to? Well, uh, He has to dissolve partnerships that we've been in for long periods of time. As a matter of fact, the closer you get to God, the harder it ought to be for you to continue in some relationships that you're in. The great theologian Howard Thurman is quoted as saying, there are two questions you need to answer as you navigate your way through life. Right. The first question is, where am I going? Mm -hmm. The second one is, who's going with me? Mm -hmm. And I tell you right now, the Lord is concerned about who we're connected to. Mm -hmm. uh, he ordains relationships uh, because relationships help you to form networks. He ordains relationships uh, with folk who want to see you win. Amen. You ought to be around, surrounded by folk who want to see you win. He also ordains those relationships that challenges us not to just win, but it also humbles us. And so I submit to you uh, that if you really want to know who a person is, don't ask them. Just look at the type of people they hang around. Mm. And I hear y'all saying you can't judge a book by its cover, but I'm reminded of something my 10th grade teacher, I saw him over the weekend. Uh, he said, association breeds assimilation. Is there anybody listening who knows that birds of a feather tend to flock together? Oh yes, my grandmother used to say, you lay down with dogs. So I wish I had a church this morning who knows that uh, who you're connected to will either help you or hinder you. Yeah. Who you're connected to will either bless you or curse you. Who you're connected to will either encourage you or discourage you. Who you're connected to is important. Yes, sir. And the older I get, the more self-conscious I get about my health. I want to live a long life, ask the Lord for 100 years. All right. And medical science tell you that eating a balanced diet, yes. exercising on a regular basis, mm -hmm. eliminating stress and negativity, mm -hmm. following up on your doctor visits by way of checkups, and believe it or not, being spiritually grounded are all essential to living a, a long life. And so, Dr. Franklin, there are supplements that are available both over the counter and through prescriptions that will also aid to good health. Mm -hmm. There are potions and pills and many other vitamins and supplements available. And let me tell you, you have to be careful with the vitamins. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're taking B12. It doesn't matter if you're taking vitamin C. It doesn't matter if you're taking vitamin D or a multivitamin or good old Geritol. You have to be careful not to develop an iron deficiency. All right. uh, a few years ago, I was diagnosed with an iron deficiency. And my doctor had to prescribe me some iron pills. And an iron deficiency occurs when the body lacks sufficient amounts of iron, resulting in reduced production of protein and hemoglobin. Teach Pastor Dix. In short, you lose the supply of in your blood, and that leads to other medical conditions. Yeah. And I don't want to bore you this morning with a whole lot of medical lingo um, that I don't even understand. I, I'm not a medical doctor. I, I, I'm a pastor, and one day maybe I'll be reverend doctor. But, but today I just want to talk about uh, something that we all need to be aware of. You've got to be careful not to develop an iron deficiency. Yeah. Oh, yes, and when I talk about an iron deficiency, I'm not talking about it in the medical sense. I'm not talking about uh, one that you have to go and purchase vitamins and supplements, but I'm speaking rather in a spiritual sense. All right. In the text, the writer Solomon declares that iron, you know what iron does. Yes. If it's someone in your life who sharpens you, iron is someone in your life who makes you better. Uh, you do know that you need people in your life who will not be satisfied enough with 
with where you are and they understand that part of their calling is that they've been placing your life to make you better. Yes. And reality is that many of us uh, have lives and we have in our lives folk and, and they're filled with people uh, who really don't make us better. You do know that the only number added that doesn't change an equation is zero. And so if you have folk in your life that's not adding to you, that they're not adding to the quality of your character, uh, you know what they are, they're zero. And so I don't want to disappoint you, and I don't know who I'm talking to, but I want you to know that God is concerned about who we are connected to in our life. And in no time is God nonchalant about the people who you're connected to. God cares deeply about who you allow access in your life. God is well aware uh, that the easiest way for the devil to detour you and get you off track from your destiny is to send folk into your life uh, who will have an emotional connection to you, but they lack concern and ability to push you toward God's will for your life. In other words, they hold you contempt and stagnant in a place of which God is trying to grow you from. And so I don't know who this is for, but I want you to know that you can do bad all by yourself. You don't need any help starving. You don't Life 
is going to serve you up some lemons. Yeah. Oh yes, every now and then folk will stab you in the back. Every now and then family will get funky on you. <laughs> Co-workers will act crazy. Yeah. Supervisors can be satanic, not my supervisor. <laughs> Amen. Let me just clear the record up. Uh, 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 friends can get fickle sometimes. And even church family can get cold-blooded on you. Well, and how I many you know well, that God has a way of hurting you and bruising you and cutting you to the very core of who you are? But I've got to encourage the church this morning that when life happens, uh, it won't matter how much money you have. It won't matter how famous you are. It won't matter where you live or went to school. Everybody needs somebody who will lift them a shoulder to cry on. You need somebody who will comfort you. You need somebody who you can be real with. Somebody you can be vulnerable with. Somebody you can take the mask off with. Somebody you can sit down and share when you're hurting, uh, when your heart is upset. Uh, so you need somebody in your life that would never throw it up in your face. You know, you can't tell everybody everything. Everybody needs somebody. Everybody needs someone to talk to, somebody to fit to, somebody to speak life into you, somebody that will encourage you that everything is going to be all right. You need a comforter. But not only a comforter, I see another friend that you need. We all need a confronter. We need a confronter. Because you, uh, you know why you need a confronter? Because you're not always right. That's right. Uh, I know you may think you have it all together, but you need somebody in your life that can look you square in the eye and call you out. Yeah. Sometimes we do things that we know we have no business doing. We go places where we ought not go. Uh, we have certain behaviors that we ought not have. We solicit to bad habits that are contrary to children of God. Uh, where are my real folk at this morning? Uh, we know that there are some folk in our lives uh, that we need to cut off because they're enablers. They help us to do wrong. They help us to do bad. Uh, they, they help us and they convict us when we're doing wrong. We got to be real. We have folk uh, who will live a life with us. Jesus. They'll even help us cover up our lies with more lies. Jesus. In fact, we go as far as to let them know that if you're my real friend, <laughs> you'll do this for me. Mm. Or what's even worse, we're around uh, folk who can't confront us. Why? Because they're doing the same stuff that you're doing. And so many times you get stuck because you have folk in your life who can't help you because they're caught up just like you are. Mm. But the reason that the Lord uses confront Show me this. It's because uh, when you have a confronter in your life, they're going to lead you to repentance. I don't know about you, but I need folk in my life who will call me out when I'm wrong. This is biblical. Uh, when Noah got drunk, there were some who wanted to expose him. But God sent Shem and Jacob to cover him. When David sinned, he sent Nathan. Uh, when Ahab and Jezebel sinned, he sent Elijah. Galatians 6 and 1 says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thy also be tempted. And so I would suggest to you that a true friend is someone who will not lie for you, but they are one who will convince you to tell the truth. In other words, if you love me, don't leave me where God is not at. If you love me, don't lie to me. If you love me, don't threaten to expose me, but love me enough to confront me. You need some ironclad friendships. All right. Ones that will confront you and comfort you. Mm. And then we also need somebody else. You need uh, folk in your life who will challenge you. Yeah. You need folk who, uh, who, who we consider holy rollers. Watch out. You need the ones uh, whose godliness uh, will get on your nerves. Mm. They're the ones that you know they won't let you wallow for in your self-pity. Yeah. But they will challenge you to remember who you are in Christ. Mm. You know when you call certain folk, uh, they're going to call you out and they're going to tell you you need to pray. You need some 
somebody that's going to challenge you to read your Bible. You need somebody who's going to preach to you. And when you call them, they're going to lecture you and ask you, what does the word of God say? I call them challengers because these are the folk who will reveal our deficiencies. They let us know that you don't pray like you should. You don't study like you should. You don't have a relationship with God like you should. You need somebody that's going to challenge you and motivate you to grow. Yes. I don't know who I'm talking to, yes. but if you know that you're back to days ago in your discipleship, you need to surround yourself around folk uh, who are already where you're trying to go. Amen. Oh yes, you need to be surrounded by friends who will challenge you to do better. They'll challenge you to take a class. They'll challenge you to join a small group. They'll challenge you to read a book. You'll never grow hanging around folk who are on your level. The best way to get up out of where you are is to surround yourself by folk who will challenge you to do better. And so yes, yes, we need a comforter. We need a confronter. Mm -hmm. We need a challenger. Mm -hmm. But then we also need somebody else. Mm -hmm. uh, we need a counselor. Mm -hmm. We need folk who will give us wise counsel. Yes. You need somebody uh, with wisdom with whom you can receive. Mm -hmm. Listen, I know that many of you in here think that um, everything you do is right. <laughs> Every thought you have is right. Your way is the best way. But can I help you? Sometimes you're wrong. The Bible teaches us in Proverbs that when we listen to wise counsel, that makes us wise. But a fool rejects wise counsel. I heard someone say it like this. Uh, if you're the smartest and the wisest person in your circle, then your circle is too small. You need some folk around you who are wiser than you. Let me put a pen here. I worked in juvenile court for years, and I found that not only are our youth struggling today because of their own incorrigibility, but many of them have unruly parents. Yep. Help me, Holy Ghost. We allow so much stuff to go on in front of our children, but I also found something else. Many young people and people in general are suffering because they reject the wisdom of their elders. Yes. Let me tell you one of the joys that I get. Every week, every week, at least once or twice a week, uh, my wife's grandmother, Granny we call her, Mother Lavinia Rogers, is 101 years old. All right. All right. Will be 102 on July 8th this year. One of the things that I get, I get joy because um, when both of our parents are past, our grandparents are past. She's the last one that we have, and every week, at least once or twice a week, she calls. Or and if, and if she's not calling, my wife will call. But she's on the phone and she pours wisdom. Yes. Let me tell you something. You got to learn how to sit at the feet yes. of folks that you can receive from. Yes. You need to surround yourself. Yes. Of talk to Dr. Franklin or Lady Franklin and get some wise counsel. Yes. I can talk to fellow pastors uh, who are bivocational pastors that have to work in ministry. I can talk to some senior man like Deacon Castle uh, who's been married for a long time and, and can tell me how to love my wife and how to raise my children. You need to be surrounded by folk who will speak wise counsel to you. Why? Because they give me wise counsel and they teach me about life. And so I thank God for the wise folk in my life. We need a comforter. We need a confronter. We need a challenger. And we need a counselor. And I'm almost through, but there's another person that you need in your life. You need a friend who will be your constituent. You need somebody that you're pouring yourself into. Okay. Pastor, you told us years ago, it was in a men's class, you told us that every man mm -hmm. needs two other males in his life. Mm -hmm. Every man needs a father figure yes. that he can look up to, yes. 
He needs a brother that he can walk with, but he needs a son yeah. that he can pour into. Yeah. And so uh, you're blessed to be a blessing. Yes. And as a beneficiary of God's grace, you ought to be taking up your time to pour into someone what the Lord has given to you. Yes. Oh, yes. Is there anybody here who knows that you are a recipient of God's grace? Yes. Being a recipient of God's mercy, a, a recipient of God's favor. God's been good to us. And yes. because he's been good to us, yes. he's blessed us beyond measure. He's made a way for out of no way. He's opened doors for us. We ought to be a blessing and pour some of that into somebody else. Oh yes, the reason God blesses us Amen. is so that we can bless somebody else. Amen. And so yes, we need a comforter. Mm -hmm. We need somebody whose shoulder we can lean on. Yes. We need a confronter. Somebody who can look you in your eye and call you uh, out. You need a challenger. Somebody's going to tell you, no, look, you know better than that. You need a counselor where you can go get wise counsel. You need a constituent who you can pour yourself into. But then lastly, we all need a celebrator in our life. You need somebody in your life that you can call on that's not going to let you be depressed. Mm. You need somebody you can call on that will encourage you to not only uh, be grateful for where you are, but you need somebody that will remind you to give God some praise. Yeah. You need somebody who doesn't mind praising you, and together y'all can praise the Lord. You need somebody who will celebrate through praise Somebody who will say, come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Yes, you need somebody who would grab your arm and say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. We need somebody who refuse to let you sit and be depressed and not realize how good God has been. Yeah. You need a celebrator. Yeah. I thank God for the celebrators of yes. Who 
Sunday school, morning service, after um, noon service, BTU in the afternoon, then an evening service somewhere, and by that time, you know, but look at what, 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 what COVID-19 showed us. You don't need a whole lot of time to do anything. And so I, I, I don't believe, I believe the Lord is going to do, listen, his word never changes. But his methodologies, he's blessed us with technology. We used to stick our chest out with having a sanctuary full of folk. But then COVID-19, for those who were able to get with it, went from having a room full to being worldwide. Don't tell me what God can't do. And so I want to encourage the church. The church has to be a healing station. You ought to be able to come in here and get everything you need. And we can't sleep on God. Because guess what? The church is made it through pandemic. The church, the universal church of God survived. But there were some ministries that didn't because they couldn't get with the program. And so I, I give God praise for churches and pastors who are able to tap in and to take ministry to another level. Congratulations. Happy 
anniversary. I will always remember your anniversary because it was six months into me, Pastor, that inner healing was birth. Amen. And so we stand here this year will be 16 years pastoring God's great with God's grace and pastoring his people. And I give God all the praise. God bless you. May God keep you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. Amen. And thank God. God bless you.